This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We are talking with retired FBI special agent and Hidden Killers contributor, Jennifer Coffin-Dapper, about America's least favorite dentist, James Craig, and his actions. Or alleged actions, I should say. Uh, I want to talk about uh, kind of poisoning uh, in general and that sort of a personality. Someone who who chooses that to be their their mode of uh, removing someone from their life that they no longer want there. Are these people more dangerous than than that of the uh, I'm going to get really upset, lose my cool, pull out the gun or pull out the knife because they are sitting there calculating this for a period of time? sometimes making multiple attempts to poison the person until it finally works. Uh, it, it seems more nefarious to me in many ways uh, of someone that's that's doing this slowly and methodically and keeping a smile on their face and making sure that that individual, in this case a spouse, doesn't suspect anything. Right. It, it certainly is calculated. Um, so it's very rare, actually. Really? For both men and women to, to choose poison. Uh, women and men both. Number one is guns. Mm-hmm. Then you go to knives. Then you go to like bludgeoning and beating. So down the line is really poisoning for just the reasons you said. Mm-hmm. It's really not that effective. They could end up living and surviving and, and you know, multiple times before you get the right dosage and, and they eat the whole muffin, mm-hmm. <laughs> drink yeah. a whole glass of coffee. So it's not uh, something you can count on like you can if you, you know, put a bullet through someone. Um, So I I think this is part of the reason that it's not the go to. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it is the go to for people who are good at planning, Mm -hmm. who are who are patient, who are patient and 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 like to scheme and and even maybe more sadistic you know, watching your loved one get sicker and sicker and sicker until they finally die. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it is rare though, uh, compared to other forms mm-hmm. of killing your spouse. Sure. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, we, we look at how this all played out and the, the second, what I found very troubling was literally the day, according to uh, his mistress at the time, uh, the day that they started communicating uh, is when he went and got the poison and began this process uh, on his wife. There wasn't necessarily a long, thought-out relationship where he wanted to leave her because they've been together. It, it seemed very, uh, all right, someone, I got a bite, someone likes me, let's get uh, the <laughs> wife gone. Very, very fast. All, I mean, in a very rash uh, decision, it, it almost seemed like, and it makes me wonder uh, you know, is this someone who's thinking clearly? Is this someone who's under the influence of something to make a decision like that? Or is this just the personality of a killer? They don't really care. Well, it'll be interesting to see if anything like that is brought up in in the defense. Uh, you know, recently, of course, on, you know, the movie Rust, mm-hmm. right? That individual now is being accused, uh, the, the armor mm-hmm. uh, that presented the gun is being accused of being under the influence. So just back to your point that, you know, they're trying, or the prosecution's charging them, but it's a double-edged sh- sword, right? Mm-hmm. It could be used to show, well, listen, this this person was wasted on drugs, and that's why the error was made, which might, you know, garner sympathy. Um, so, you know, just back to your point there, Could that be a defense that they end up coming up with? We'll have to wait and see. But what I found striking about this case, Tony, is just it's so interesting to me to see so many well-educated, you know, to to become a doctor is so difficult, an arduous arduous, uh, academic path. and, and, And to see this guy just order it to his office. Yeah. That, that, you know, use his computer. I think he used it in the back room or something. I, I, it's just, just absolutely, they're terrible criminals. They might be able to fix a hernia or, you know, diagnose well, but mm-hmm. man, they just, they're just the worst criminals. The smarter, the the worst criminals they seem to be. And that's, uh, there's a lot that's shocking here. So especially that, uh, the fact that, yes, I mean, he ordered some of this through Amazon uh, at his office thinking, 
well, it's the office computer. Who's going to look at that? I don't know. The FBI, when they're looking at you for the murder, they're going to look at everything that you have. And poison in general. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know the answer to this, but I'm assuming most ways of poisoning someone at this day and age are somewhat detectable, are they not? Yes, they're detectable, uh, almost all poisons, but uh, a lot of them leave the body early. It de- you know, it de- some are not looked for in poison screens. Mm-hmm. You know, your normal, it, it takes a lot more for arsenic to be detected. Very special testing that you have to say to self, self as a doctor, I need to have this specimen tested. But to your point, all right, well, um, when you when you believe or when you have Google searches, this is the other thing, Tony. Isn't it funny? <laughs> yes. All of our all of our criminals, the Google got them. Yeah. They've been Googled because they go on to Google and Google all that they're going to do. Even even the list killer, you know, the Gilgo Beach murderer. Yeah. He's googling all of this. Yeah. Um, everybody's googling, and and they don't go to a library to do it. Uh, because everybody's lazy and they want to be needs to be convenient, and and this is what's really going to hurt him are these Google searches. And that's a good point to make. That's very interesting. And in, when you're talking about the profile of, of someone or killer, uh, kind of in broader terms, the fact that they are lazy in in many ways that they didn't go to a library that they didn't look these sort of things up in a nondescript way where it really couldn't be traced back to them, which are readily available to any of us. Should we want to do something like that in terms of searching something and not getting caught and Google searches to me, uh, they're almost more valuable sometimes I think than DNA, than a fingerprint because you're getting into someone's mind and you're hearing exactly what's going through it, what they're thinking, all of the different uh, caveats of what they may be thinking as they go through uh, preparing for a crime or the aftermath of that crime down to the detail. And those sort of things, I would think, are far more damning to them in front of a jury because it's much more understandable than just, well, that this type of DNA matches to this and this and that. Uh, would you agree that that the Google searches are are one of the biggest slam dunks for putting these people away? I I think it is such strong evidence because juries, the bottom line is, even though the prosecution doesn't have to prove it, they want to understand the why. Why does a doctor, you know, do this? Mm-hmm. How? What are they thinking? Well, their Google searches are a track record of exactly what they were thinking. It's beautiful. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. 